Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well. Um, and I hope that you guys have gotten some great reading in and I hope that actually some of you read this month's book club book because there is a lot to talk about. Um, I know this video is coming a little bit to you late and it's because there's so many thoughts I had and I didn't know exactly how I was going to talk about this book. But just as a reminder, just in case you guys didn't know, we read Disoriental by Nagar Javadi. This is originally um, in French, translated from the French by Tina Cover, and it is right now a finalist for the National Book Award Translated Fiction Prize, the very first one. And I think it's a strong contender to win, to be honest. Um, and it's from Europa, which is one of my favorite independent little presses, and they do amazing work. Um, and just in case you guys are new to how I do my book club, just a reminder, the first 10 minutes or so are going to be spoiler free. I'll count you out, remind you what the next book club book is going to be, and then we'll do some spoilers. I, there's a lot to say about this book, but it's gonna, I've had a hard time articulating, so I apologize if this is not my normal sort of spiel. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, there's a lot in this book. So this book is about, our main character is born, she was born in Iran. She is the youngest of three girls, two parents. And at the age of 10, her family is forced to leave Iran and move to France um, because of the political unrest that's going on in the country. And on top of that, her parents' involve in, involvement in the political system um, and some stuff that her father does that force him to have to leave the country. Um, the start of the book, as I've said before in the past, she is sitting in a fertility clinic where she is waiting um, for the next steps in her fertility process uh, to get pregnant and to have a baby. Um, we learn from the very get-go that the father is not there and he is away. He wasn't able to make this appointment. So she is waiting and she is waiting a long, long time um, to see the doctor. It turns out the doctor isn't there and there's a waiting room and there's a bunch of people all dealing with fertility at different levels, different parts of the process. Um, in that, while she's sitting there, she starts to sort of think about her family, her father, her grandfather, her uncles are very prevalent, her mom, her sisters, and all sort of the thing that sort of led her to this moment. Um, this book, if you are a person that is looking for um, a very involved and dense, poetic, beautifully written, but it's not... It's not a book you fly through. This is a very dense read. It's very stylistic. It has a lot to say and every sentence is important and every paragraph is, is needed. And it is, I mean, it's so good, but it's really hard to talk about. Um, you learn a lot about Iranian history, Iranian political history. I learned a lot about the um, fertility process in France. Um, we learn very upfront that the fertility process there is is really saved for couples trying to have children. Um, and you have to sort of be in that situation in order to even qualify. Um, we learn a lot about her development as a person um, and who she becomes. I'm gonna save some of that for the spoiler section because the back of the book doesn't talk too much about who she is and as an adult. And I think the revelation as you learn about her is part of the poetic power that is this novel. Um, I will say if you are looking for a book that has a way of just sucking you in and really teaching but also telling you a fantastic story, this book is for you. If you are a person that likes to sort of read quickly and fly through your books, this book would not be for you. Um, this is something that you really have to invest the time and the effort in. Um, it is very, it's very sort of, I keep using the word dense and I don't know that that, I don't mean that as an, as a bad thing. I think it's just, it's chocked full of history and facts and people and characters. 
Um, I think if you like family drama, this book is for you. She has these uncles that are numbered and she references them as their number. And you get to know sort of, it starts with her grandfather and her grandmother, how that sort of happens, where that relationship comes from. And then it goes down the line. It goes down to her, uh, actually, I think it may be her great, great grandparents, her grandfather, her father, how she and her sisters come in to... Um, being um, the family dynamic as her sort of, um, there's a great sort of discussion about the fact that she is the third child and it is very much thought that she will be a boy. Her father is hoping for a boy. Her mother thinks it's uh, that she's going to be a boy and she doesn't come out a boy, clearly. And how that changes, how she's treated, how her father raises her different from her sisters because he wanted a son. Um, I think that all is very interesting, that sort of family dynamic. Um, there's a lot in this book about political history in Iran, standing up to the system. Um, there's a lot that will teach you about how does a person become who they are with all of this stuff going around them? Does that make sense? Um, yeah, you guys, this book is really good. It's just hard to talk about, um, without spoiling anything. So I really highly recommend you read it. Europa has never led me wrong. I will say that again, this isn't going to be a book for everybody because it is a dense, um, involved read. So you really have to be willing to put the time in. It's beautifully translated. There's a lot of, oh, you know what? I wanted to read you. Let me see if I can find the page. Um, there's a great quote in it um, that I think sort of, to me, summarizes writing and literature and what, why people put words on a page. And it basically says, it's um, the father of the main character says, regarding, um, oh, let me just read it to you. It says, my father, Darius Sadar, the master of the blank page, the audacious, the revolutionary, used to say in his pensive and visionary voice, the eyes are better listeners than the ears. Ears are deep wells made for chatter. If you have something to say, write it. But there have been moments in my life, more or less important sequence of events, when I would have done anything to be something other than what I am. And I think that sums up what you need to know about Disoriental. If you didn't read it, I, I really do. I encourage you to do it. It's a challenge, but it's worth it. And I think people will be talking about this book. Um, I think it's a real contender to win the National Book Award. It has more of a streamlined story than some of the other narratives. Um, and the main character and what she goes through, it, it, it's in, it's really compelling. Um, so, yeah. Um, so I'm going to count you guys out. I just want to remind you that in the month of November, we will be reading Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson. Let me hold that up for you. Um, this is our YA choice for the debut authors you may have missed book club. And this will be the November book. So as always, if this is where you're at, I'll talk to you later. We're going to talk spoilers in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, guys. So what spoilers do we want to talk about? For me, the most importantly relevant aspect to myself was the coming out and sexuality of our main character. Um, the fact that she is a lesbian is really sort of hinted to in the first part of the novel, but when it comes to the forefront and we meet the women that have changed her life, it added a new complexity and dimension to the book for me. Um, I thought it was really interesting that the author and the character discuss the fact that as the third daughter, she is raised more or less by her father as if she were his son. So she's treated differently than her sisters. So there's almost this idea of nurture versus nature and sort of this discussion on whether or not that may be part of the reason that she grows up to be a lesbian. I thought that was interesting. And I don't know that to me it totally resolved, but I think as a character, the main character juggles that as a person. And I don't know that it's resolved for her as well, which I thought was really interesting. I thought the fact that she was... She, was, she is being dishonest in the reason that she's having the baby, right? She wants the insemination, the artificial insemination, because she wants to have a baby with her partner. 
and her gay friend has stepped in as the um the father and it's clear that they have this dynamic where they have to sort of trick the doctors into thinking they're a relationship fascinating the idea that the father is hiv positive there's a way to get sort of almost around that in the infertile in the fertilization process so that she can have a baby um i thought that that was interesting a little bit left out there sort of didn't really develop um but it it got me thinking and if you guys have watched my last video you know that it put in my mind thoughts and i started to think about things a little bit differently for me, her character arc, her as a person, was the best part of the book in and of itself. And I liked the end a lot. I liked her. I liked meeting the, the um, is it, I want to say it's Emma, and I know that's probably not right. Um, I read this, Anna. Isn't Anna the name of her partner? Um, I really, I really appreciated sort of the development of her and her relationship because the first half of the book is so much about her family that her as a person is sort of left to be a development of this is where I came from and now this is who I am, which I think is actually pretty brilliant in and of itself. Um, and I think this is what the thing I was using to, uh, mark that quote that I read to you guys. Um, what else? I thought that the idea, the, fa the, the father and his revolutionary technique to use the printed page was really powerful. I think it's interesting that a writer would use that method as their form of um, revolution, resistance, um, which I think a lot of writers throughout history have used their novels and their pen to be part of a resistance movement, um, which I found very timely um, in our current uh, world. I think a lot of writers and artists are using their art in order to resist. And her father does that and her mother supports that. Um, I think this book is very dark. You know, the mother is taken away once the father is taken away, remember? And when he comes back, he's clearly been um, physically and emotionally and psychologically abused. Um, but they believe in what they're doing, um, which I thought was powerful. I think the fact that our main character is looking at all of this from the outside and all of the history is hearsay before her parents or before her birth, really. Um, she does a good job of staying just back enough um, that keeps you interested, but also realizing that she doesn't know the whole story and her perspective can be flawed, um, which I thought was really, really well done. Um, what else do I want to say about this book? There's so much to say, um, but it's also, again, as I said, it was, it was, it's a hard book for me to talk about. Oh, I guess we should talk about the event. Um, there is this event, right, that is sort of referenced throughout the entire book. I still don't know to me if I agree on what the event was. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this book, and I think because I was more attached to the character as a person, I, I was there. So to me, sort of the, some of the family dynamic and some of the political unrest wasn't as meaningful to me as her as a character. I really just connected with her and her struggle and her desires to have a family and to have a home, which I found really quite well done. Um, yeah, where where were you guys drawn into this book? Did you guys find this book a hard book to talk about? I was trying to sort of figure out and talking to people about the book, and I just had a hard time articulating. Um, and maybe I need to reread it. Maybe I need to percolate on it a little bit more. Maybe I need to go back through it and sort of reread sections because it's not a book. It is so dense and it's so much information at times that I think sometimes I got a little bit bogged down and lost a little bit. Um, and then remembering everything that had sort of its power to me. Um, I really enjoyed it, um, but I, I do. I'm finding it a hard book to talk about, so I'm sorry. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed reading Disoriental. I hope that it challenged you like it challenged me. Um, I think that uh, Europa really puts out a lot of stuff that has its own sense of power. Um, yeah, I really liked it. But I, again, I apologize. This isn't my most articulate video. Um, but this is Disoriental by Nagar Tavadi, uh, translated from the French by Tina Cover.
What do you guys think? Let's talk about it down below. Reminder, again, that our next book is Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson, and we will be reviewing this at the end of November. And I hope you guys like this. You know, the book club is almost over. We have only November and December left. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed participating. As always, until next time, I am so happy if you are a return subscriber, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, and until next time, happy reading, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!